Welcome to the Church Solutions Podcast, brought to you by JSL Solutions. The Church Solutions Podcast is designed to help equip you and your church in the use of technology and other tools and services. And now, here are your hosts, Steve Lacey and Phil Thompson. Hello, and welcome to another edition of the Church Solutions Podcast. Hi, my name is Steve Lacey. And my name is Phil Thompson. It's great to have you here with us as we do this weekly podcast. We're a company called JSL Solutions, and uh, we are a uh, really a company that operates a lot like a ministry. In other words, we don't make any money. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Actually, there's a lot of ministries that make money, <laughs> but we're not one of them. So what do we do, Steve, very quickly before so we get into we today's topic? We provide three-man products, streaming church.tv, we live streaming for churches, Church App Live, which is a mobile app, and myflock.com, which is a content and church management system. And... Um, if you have any questions or you're interested in, in uh, one of our, our mission statements is helping churches use technology to reach people. Uh, and so today we are going to talk about a kind of a fun subject. It's not so much tech related, but as we've said here before, Steve and I work with churches. We are involved in leadership in our own churches, and we've got lots of history and lots of experience in leadership. And so from time to time, we talk about church-related issues that may not always be tech-related, but you know, part of our goals are to help you as a pastor, as a leader, as a volunteer, to help your church you know, be more effective and reach people. So what are we talking about today? So today we're talking about the nonverbal messaging that your church can um, display or communicate, I guess, so the go. nonverbal communication. Nonverbal communication. So if you've done any kind of marriage counseling or anything like <laughs> that, uh, you know, everybody has, everybody has nonverbal communication. People have nonverbal communication. It could be they frown or they look funny when right. somebody says something. Uh, people communicate not just verbally, but they communicate nonverbally with their their posture, their right. attitudes, uh, all those kind of things. And it's the same way with churches, with things that we do at church. A lot of times uh, the things that we do are signs, are names of our ministries, uh, things we have up in our church many times are nonverbal. They, they, they communicate something, but it's nonverbal. Right. We may not know they're communicating something. Right. We may think it's communicating one thing, and but to the this is kind of geared towards the first time visitor or somebody right. new to your church. What some of that nonverbal communication is that you may or may not recognize as being communicated to them. Exactly. exactly. So we've got nine different nonverbal communication examples, right? We've got at least nine here, and we'll probably spring off. So, so let's just jump right into it. So, again, many churches unintentionally communicate who they really are, what they really believe underneath. The, the the rhetoric. So let's let's just jump in, and some of this will be kind of fun. Some of it might hurt your feelings if you're involved in church work, and maybe some of you have these things going on in your church. It might kind of peeve you a little bit, but hey, have an open heart, right. open mind. So, right? so number one on our list. Number one on our list is my phone rings here. Uh, would be uh, church parking lots with signs that say no skateboarding. Church parking lots with signs that say no skateboarding. Now you might think right off the bat that, well, what's wrong with that? We we uh, you know we don't want people doing any kind of skate skateboarding, but there's a message under that, right? Right. And, and it's basically it, saying we don't want kids like you hanging around here. <laughs> all right. So uh, you know this is all. Some of this stuff is going to be. Uh, what's the word? Maybe not relative, but it's going to be up to different people's opinions on this. Okay, right. but my opinion is, I personally don't think Jesus would put up signs that tell kids to keep away from the church. <laughs> Again, that's just me. <laughs> the argument might be, well, you know, Jesus doesn't want people getting hurt, and besides that, if people get hurt, our insurance will go up. You know, and. But I think sometimes, again, from an outsider or, or somebody that's relatively new coming to your church, they see a sign that says, you know, no skateboarding. 
yeah. could communicate something, possibly. I um, I grew up skateboarding, and it was yeah. skateboarding actually through college at skate parks and stuff. And yeah. we used to have, we'd get um, just a, a negative vibe or somebody would, you know, chew us out for something. And we basically just go, oh, it's a non-skater. doesn't. Right. <laughs> so, but it was very much of a, uh, it sent a signal of, ah, we don't want your your kind around here. Right. So again, that's it's. This is all open to opinion. We're going to go through some of these that may you may disagree with. We'd love to hear from you if you. But so let's move on. The second point. This is my pet peeve. So church auditoriums with signs that say no food or drink. So church auditoriums or uh, worship center or sanctuary, whatever you want to call it, signs that say no food or drink. So little story behind this. So when I uh, when I went to Kansas and helped start a church. I guess you could say in some ways I restarted it. We had four family members, uh, four families, I should say, that we started this church. We changed everything, the 501c3 and charter and all this. And they they actually had a facility. They had a building. Nobody was going to it, but they had a building. And they had put in carpet. Uh, It wasn't real expensive carpet. It was kind of the, I don't know what you call it, an industrial carpet, (laughs) kind of like what your church has. And my church has the same thing. High traffic stuff. Yeah, high traffic carpet, industrial type of stuff. And so they they said, no food, no drink in here. We want to preserve the carpet. And basically, I told them this. You're placing a higher value on this facility than you do people's needs. Because, and then I think I quoted some scripture about how uh, man was not made for the Sabbath. The Sabbath was made for man or something. And my, my point was, hey, this is a facility. We want people to feel comfortable when they walk in. We're gonna we're gonna have coffee. We're gonna have drinks for people, so that when they walk in, they can feel comfortable uh-huh. and and not feel like it's you know a sanitized. You, yeah, you yeah. remember as a kid going over to that that friend's house where the where the parents had the plastic runners everywhere oh, and yeah. the covers over the sofas, right. and yeah. you felt like, oh my gosh, I'm 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 yeah. <laughs> well, and and my point was, look, we can always clean the carpet. <laughs> You know, so let's create an environment that's warm and friendly. And, and if people want to, you know, if people want to bring food and drink in and that's good, let them do it. Mm -hmm. And we do that at my church today and yep, we're cleaning up messes all the time, but it's a warm, friendly environment. People like it. It's a happening place. Yeah, it is. So, all right. So, and again, this, this, the idea behind this is. Uh, you know, you've got this message you're sending to newcomers. It's a negative one if you have this sign up. Uh, you know, and anyhow, it's just it's you're communicating something to your, vis- your visitors. Mm-hmm. It's no, we don't want you around. All right, moving on here. <laughs> we don't want sloppy people. <laughs> well, and, and again, I, I realize people listening to this podcast may disagree. We'd love to hear your thoughts on this. All right, we have the podcast, not you. So we're gonna we're gonna tell you what we think. Go ahead. All right, number three, <laughs> ministry names that only an insider would be able to decipher. This is another favorite of mine. So. Uh, these ministries are for people who don't need an explanation. So there are some thoughts here, and there's a guy by the name of Paul Alexander who had some thoughts on this, and we're going to share with you some ministry insider names. And you tell us if you think, if you agree or not. So again, it's, 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 um, why don't we just jump into it instead of trying to explain All right, so it. some examples of so here's some examples. ministry names that only an insider would be right. able to decipher. Exactly. So one, of the, one is called... And some of these are kind of good, but let's see if you agree. Nation 29. Nation, the number 29. What is Nation 29? Well, yeah. No I, idea, right? Well, what it is, it's a young adult ministry, and it's it's the church is targeting young people 20 to 29. So there you have Nation 29. <laughs> nation 29. Nation 29. So they're targeting. So their intention is great. Their motivation is wonderful. They want to target young people. And so it might be clear to people inside the church what this is. It doesn't say anything to people who are outside your church, who are coming to visiting. See what I'm getting at? Now, I'm going to say this. I'm not against these names. I'm not either. I think what you should do, though, is ha- is always have something that explains, that explains the name. it, a subtitle or something. Yeah. So Nation to Nine, and you could put in parentheses, Young Adult Ministry, 20 to 29. Yeah. That you, would probably be good enough. Right. So, so, yeah, if you went with just the names alone, then it can be 
either completely vague or right. as we get into some of these others that communicate right. something completely different than yeah. the name. Well, and here's one that, and I was in on this when I worked at your church years ago, we used to do this thing called at the movies and, uh, at the movies is, is a, is a deal where, uh, we, we stole it from life church which actually stole it from somebody else in the nineties, but it's, it's, it's devoting four or five weeks of messages to, uh, and showing a lot of movie clips going around those messages that you're doing, you know? So, uh, so we call it at the movies, right? Well, the problem we had was we, we, we used the initials ATM. <laughs> so we, we printed up stuff that said, you know, come to ATM coming in whatever this summer, ATM. <laughs> and one day somebody said, what is ATM? It's an automatic teller <laughs> machine. <laughs> all, and we all looked at each other and go, oh, it was a, you know, a palm slap to the face. It's like, Oh, I can't believe this. <laughs> you know, nobody knew what ATM was. I mean, I shouldn't say nobody, because if you've been around the church, you would probably know. If you're an ATM insider. Was. You knew everything. Right. But so, you know, we changed that. All right. So here's, here's another one very quickly. Some of these are really funny. I think, uh, you want to read the next one. So Romeo, Romeo is the next one. Again, here's Romeo. Now, if you see something Romeo meets Friday night, what's <laughs> Romeo? You know, you see it in the bulletin or see it on a sign. Romeo, here's what it stands for. Real old men eating out. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a once a week gathering of old men. I'm not lying. This is a, these are true. These are true documentations here. Okay. It's a once a week gathering of old men who eat out together and talk about God's word. Okay. Again, great opportunity, great way to connect, you know, a generation there. Is it real old men or real old men? <laughs> no, but so I mean, you're really old or you're a real person. that's well, old. <laughs> I, I don't know that. I, I don't even know what church we won't mention the church. I don't know what a church it was, but acronyms, you know, they're, they're a quintessential example of insider language. So if your name or your brand needs an ex explanation, it's not clear enough. See? Right. So again, this could be easily be fixed by Romeo and then under it, I guess you could say real old men eating out. I guess. I don't know. But that would at least be better than just Romeo. Right. All right. So next on our list yeah. is Men on Fire. Men on Fire. Okay. Again, great intention here. A men's ministry is what it is. It's a men's ministry at church. The only problem is people outside the church don't think the same way or have the same filter as people inside your church. So, so on well, fire inside the church means, oh, I'm on fire for the Lord. Right. Outside the church, you're like, oh my gosh, we better call right. yeah. <laughs> 911. I mean, church people notoriously talk about what? Let's be on fire for Jesus, you know? But again, people outside the church, I don't know what that is. All right, moving on here. Here's, here's another one of my favorites here. So number four, chicks with sticks. Chicks with sticks. <laughs> Not to be confused with something else, but chicks with sticks is now what in the world is sticks or I'm sorry, chicks with sticks. What is that? I mean, how would you know what that is? Uh, they're chicks with sticks. I mean, are they little chickens or are they actually women? <laughs> women with, with that are uh, armed drumsticks. Uh, you know, what is it? What is chicks with sticks? So here's the answer. It's a quilting ministry, quilting ministry in the church. And absolutely, this these things are real, what we're telling you here, okay? Now, again, nothing wrong with this. It's just you probably ought to say what it is. Chicks with sticks, and in parentheses, maybe somewhere, you know, a quilting ministry. Women's quilting ministry. Yeah, something like that, okay? Uh, you know, right. again, outsiders, what the heck's, what is that, you know? So. All right, just a few more here. Yeah, let's move on. So, we have plenty of time. Here. Girlfriends Unlimited? Girlfriends Unlimited. Now, if you're single and you see that, you might think, wow, this is the church to be at. You know, I can be a part of and have a bunch of unlimited girlfriends, but that's <laughs> not what it is. It's a men's ministry. <laughs> of <laughs> no, it's not a men's ministry. It's a women's ministry. Yes, I, could, I know sure that. sure people but, would think it might. Uh, yeah, some girlfriends. Might like it. I, I had never really thought of it that way. I guess I'm too much of an insider until I just yeah. saw this. I'm like, oh. This could be. I could have unlimited girlfriends. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> when I was single, I I had several girlfriends. Sign up for that, huh? That was, you know, but I never called it girls unlimited. But yeah, this is a women's ministry in the church. And again, this may be very clear. 
the people inside the church. And any single 20 something young man is going to sign up for this <laughs> if he doesn't know what it is. Okay. <laughs> but you know, again, it, you need to say something about it. Just girlfriends unlimited. Again, probably not a bad name, but you probably need to put something in it, you know, again, a subtitle or something. Yeah. Women's ministry. So we got next is a, another acronym X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. Okay. So X, Y, Z meets, you know, Saturday morning. Well, what is X, Y, Z? And, and the explanation is it's called extra years of zest. Okay. Extra years of, that's what X, Y, Z stands for. Okay. A fun little thing there. It's a, it's a senior ministry, you know, but it's an acronym that doesn't mean anything to anyone who isn't, you know, if, if you're, if you're not an insider, you're not going to know what that is. So next on our list, Bodybuilders. All right, bodybuilders. Okay, so I, I had a pastor friend of mine that was kind of in the bodybuilding, did a lot of weightlifting. I'm sure he would be, you know, thrilled with this. And he shows up, and it's it's not. It's actually a Bible study. It's not, a Bible study. It's not a Bible. with no weights or gym in sight. Nope, not at all. So this next one's a really common one. Yeah, this one is very common. It's MOPS. And, yeah, another acronym. MOPS. It's an acronym. MOPS. M O P S. A lot of churches have been using this ministry mops, you know, it, if you know it, if you've been around for a while, you've probably heard of it, but if you have not been around, you're thinking mops, mops meets, you know, Wednesday morning. Does that mean I need to, am I part of the cleaning ministry? Am I part of, am I going to be a part of, do I need to bring my mop to this? Are we going to, you know, All right. clean the, clean the, the church, you know, kitchen. What are we going to do here? Mop stands for mothers of preschoolers. Uh, again, pretty well known in certain circles, but again, if you don't know this, what what is it? All right. So, the last one on our list, or is well, actually a couple. We got There's ten of them, more. huh? So, equally yoked. Okay, another name for a ministry: equally yoked. I have no clue. You know, again, if you're a church person, you might get a hint. You might possibly get this. But is this an egg ministry? You know, is it something to do with breakfast? What is it? And it's a marriage ministry. Marriage ministry. And then marriage ministry. Okay. the last on our list is jam. Okay, jam. Again, an reference to breakfast. Uh, what is jam? It's jam. A, it's are a we going to go? Is it, is it a band? Yeah. We do, are we meeting together and we all get a jam together? Uh uh, I actually know a church that that does this occasionally. They they have what they they have a meeting where they all get together and play their guitars and work on some things together. Anybody can come if you play a guitar, but that's not what this is. This is Jesus and me. Jesus and me jam. Jesus and me again. And this this is actually a real ministry. It's a student ministry at a church. And again, it's nice, cute little name, just not clear. Right. So this is. All under the heading of ministry names that only an insider. Right. Yeah, we got a little bit off sidetracked here, but but I thought these were fun little names. So and this is yeah, this is a nonverbal. This is it's oh, non this, again. This one would be verbal, but well, it is it's a, a name, yeah. right? Maybe it is a nonverbal communication. Yeah. So uh, hats off to Paul Exan- Paul Alexander who found that. Uh, but again, we're talking about nonverbal communication. So moving on to the fourth point. Greeter teams with an average age of 55. Or above 55. Or above 55. And so we're talking about nonverbal communication at your church here. Uh, we talked about signs. We talked about names. And now we're talking about stuff that happens, real life stuff. So the point of this is if you don't have any young people, uh, well, you, what you're well, saying. Well, this basically says either. Either you've got to be old to be involved at this church, or we don't have any young people. We have no young people. Yeah, that, that was what I was getting at. Is what this communicates non-verbally is we don't have young people, or young people aren't involved, right? right. Which is what you just said. Or we don't really, we're not really concerned about young people. We just want to meet and make the old people feel happy. Yeah, yeah. So right, we want the, and you know, nothing wrong with making older people feel comfortable. Right. But you know, again, is that all you're trying to do? You just want to mix it up. Yeah. So, and and the reason we have greeter, we mentioned greeter teams here with an average age of above 55 is that your greeter team, chances are they're the people that make the first impression 
on your newcomers, Mm -hmm. on your visitors, on your guests. It's your greeter team that they're going to see first, probably. And so it would be good to make sure you have a nice little mix in there, you know, uh, of some younger people as well as, you know, some older people, you know, and women. So, all right. All right. Number five, this is our favorite. Yes. We we find this out all the time whenever we go to a church to try to help them with something. Right. Lack of clear wayfinding signage. Lack of clear wayfinding signage. In other words, uh, how do I find the office? How do I find the sanctuary? Where do my kids go? Where do I begin? This is a big bigger problem on the bigger campuses yes. where there's multiple buildings yeah. and and yeah it, it it basically says if you don't have any clear signage that means you're not expecting anybody new to show up yeah that's the nonverbal communication is we don't expect anybody new to show up now even smaller churches you know again i go back to this church i helped start in kansas we actually had a it, it's i don't have a lot of time to get into it but they actually had they were right next to fort riley army base and so they had actually picked up two army barracks for like dirt enough, dirt cheap. They got it for like a few hundred bucks. And they put these this army barrack together. It was a long, long, narrow building. They put it together and they had a basement under it. And uh, I mean, it worked for them when, when, when they had a church before I was there, it worked okay for them. Uh, so we had our kids ministry downstairs. So you would walk in the lobby and you could go downstairs, you know, for your kids. And, and there were several rooms down there. It was not, not bad actually, but the problem was there was no signage. So you walk in, where do my kids go? You know, <laughs> there's a basement down here. You know, is that where they go? Do they go to the left? Do they go to the right? Do they stay upstairs? So again, lack of clear way clear wayfinding signage is in. That's one of the first things we did was we put signage up, you know, mm-hmm. how to get to the bathrooms, how to get to whatever the yeah. office. And as you mentioned it's earlier, we, we visit other churches and typically during the week and we're trying to find the office or whatever. And it's oh, sometimes yeah. really challenging. Oh, it's, it's a trip sometimes it is. All right. So moving on here to nonverbal communication, the sixth point is water spots on the ceiling, stained floors, outdated paint, etc. So the the nonverbal communication here is we've been here so long, we don't even see the flaws anymore. We don't see the dirt. We don't see the stuff that needs worked on because yeah. we've been here forever. Um, you know, this is really a good point. I think all of us should do this once in a while in our facilities. Uh, we should have somebody else walk in and just look around and tell us what they what see. What do you see? And what their impression is. Yeah, everyone has this issue even in your homes yeah. and oh, yeah. you completely look over that pile of whatever because it's just become a fixture yeah. and oh yeah. And you Very don't even common. notice anymore. We have blind spots. You know, we all have blind spots. Uh, so we get stains on the floor because we let people bring their drinks into the right. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I mean, you, 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 you hopefully, you know, run a carpet cleaner through there once in a while. Yeah, it reminds it, me, I need to borrow it. It basically cleaner. communicates that, that we don't care. Mm-hmm. You know, we're not right. talking about a lack of funds or that right. sort of thing. This yeah. is just some just. Yeah, you got company coming over. You're going to straighten up a little bit and try to fix things. Yeah. So. yeah. I actually kind of like having company come over once in a while because we actually clean up our house. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So. We got to take that same attitude to church. Yeah. People are going to come. Yeah, clean the place up. Uh-huh. All right. So moving on. We're almost out of time. We've got a little bit more time. Point number seven. So passing the offering plates without emphasizing ways to give online or via mobile. So – this is really convicts me because I am usually the guy, if I'm not, and I don't speak at my church, I speak maybe once a month, sometimes a little bit more, but I'm usually the guy that closes the service out after the speaker, after the pastor speaks, I get up, make a couple quick announcements and we do the offering and all that stuff. And I'm so convicted about this because I don't do this enough. You should really encourage people to give online or give mobily. And if you don't do that, you're basically saying that your tradition is more important than helping people, you know, learn generosity. So, you know, we've talked about this before in our other podcast. 
you need to give people different alternatives or different options right. to give. And I'm probably not unlike a lot of people in that I don't carry cash. I've, yeah. I do have $10 on me, but I've been nursing that $10 bill for probably about a month now. That poor $10 <laughs> bill is probably <laughs> suffocating. In your- so, yeah, people don't carry cash anymore. Yeah. And so, yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I'm, I'm bad at this because I keep forgetting. I mean, we do put, we post it. We have, you know, the, the mobile app on our slides. We actually have it in our program guide. You know, you can give online, but I should verbally say it when I, when I do the offering, I keep forgetting. So. All right. Okay. Number eight on our list, lack right. of, we talked about this, I think last week, was it yeah, lack of follow through when people yeah. fill out info cards yeah. or request information that basically the nonverbal communication is, we don't really care about you or what your needs are. Yeah. When you, you know, hopefully you have some kind of a connection card or information card that you have people fill out. And for our church, we have not only, we ask not only new people to do it, but also people that are regular attenders. They have a prayer request, have something you're interested in being involved in that you've seen in the program or seen on the video. You know, fill out your connection card, drop it in your offering. We had this problem when I first started at the church I was at when I was helping them. They didn't have anything like that, so we put this together. And then the second step was getting dropped. <laughs> it was being dropped. People fell out the card. Nobody followed would up. Follow up. And so the message is, we don't really want you or need you. That's the nonverbal communication that we're talking about here. So please, if you're going to go to the time and trouble to have some kind of an information card, please make sure somebody follows up. And right. it, it, it makes people feel bad, you know, if you they put something down and nobody contacts them. Yeah. You know, I mean, what's well, going on? I have on, an you know? urgent prayer request nobody or whatever cares, it may be. You know? Right. So, all right, the last one. Almost out of time. The last one is cheesy, judgmental, or real irrelevant church signs on the road. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> I see this. I don't see it as much as I used to. But if you're if you've got a sign, uh, you know, try to <laughs> try to communicate something that doesn't sound stupid or you know judgmental s- or some of the best. There are some great church signs out there. There's a, actually a book that was dedicated to just church yeah, signs. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, I, I see some every once in a while on Facebook. They're they're funny, but they're also sad because basically you're hopefully hopefully you're trying to connect with people in your community, and if you're putting down something that's really harsh or just I don't know how to say it, just doesn't make sense. People can't communicate. People don't understand what it means. All right. Uh, you're you're not connecting with people, and basically it, it's telling the world out there that you just don't understand how to connect with people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you don't understand how to do that, and so uh, just you know, be careful about that. You know? Right. So anyhow, all right. So that's that's that concludes our little deal here. Essential or what? What was the title? Nonverbal. What we ver- what we communicate non verbally. Yeah, nonverbal communication. So that's what we now. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. If you think this is crazy, if you think we're out to lunch on this, uh, we'd love to hear from you. Support at streamingchurch.tv. Catch us on iTunes. Give us a nice little review or not. Uh, check us out on YouTube. We have the audio. Port. There's also some video on YouTube, but the audio is on YouTube. Just look for streamingchurch.tv and find us on streaming. No, what's what's our uh, new media new, ministries? Yes, new media ministries TV. Don't forget the dot TV. New media ministries TV. All right, thank you, Steve, for your uh, input. All right, great being here. And thanks, folks, for listening to uh, uh, to another edition of our Church Solutions podcast. We hope that you have a great day. I'm Phil Thompson. He's Steve Lacey. We'll catch you next time. Take care.